Namaste learners. We are entering the third week on our course Research Ethics. So let us come to this week module. This week module will be taken by Professor Uma Kanjilal. We have made it very, very brief because you told you need more time on practicals, some of the feedback. So I recorded this video clip only for this fact that uh, what we are going to change, some changes will be there in the format so that it will come to you. So uh, we are going to have uh, almost uh, research ethics foundation and history from a very well-known faculty, Professor Uma Kanjilal. She is working with IGNO as a director and also work with a lot of e-learning modules of IGNO. So she will be briefly giving you about research ethics that from the research ethical consideration and some of the case studies and some of the very 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 important aspects which is recorded in the history where ethic is been compromised followed by i'm also requesting a faculty from goya university dr gopakumar to highlight on ethics in research publications so there may be some facts which is covering in both faculty, but this is basically for the foundation, the definition, history of which you are looking in the first week, which uh, in the first week modules. So we are covering that here as an introduction part and foundational research ethics. And I wish you a happy learning. Stay connected with us. And this week, general research ethics theory only no practicals so you get more time two weeks time for doing practicals which is covered as the tool stand tuned with us and i will introduce dr professor uma kanjilal from ICNO for the next session hi i am uma kanjilal in this video let us try to understand what is research ethics and also look into the historical development of the concept this is first part of the module on Introduction to Research Ethics and Scientific Writing. To start with, let us understand what is research. It refers to collection of data, its organization, analysis, interpretation and utilization. Now let us understand what is research ethics. It means achieving objectives of the research honestly with careful integrity and openness, considering intellectual property aspects, without compromising on legality and for the betterment of all. Research ethics can be subdivided into four main areas. Human ethics, dealing with human as a research subject for medical and social issues. Animal ethics, dealing with animals as a research subject in which Cruelty is an issue. Environmental ethics dealing with genetically modified organisms that is GMOs. The hunting and killing of endangered species. Ethics of scientific communication dealing with API in which promotion is an issue. Now let us look into the history of the research ethics referring to some major developments. Second World War is considered as the most important landmark mainly accounting to the scientific medical experiments conducted on prisoners of war in the concentration camps. Nuremberg Code of 1947 is one such example wherein criminal proceedings against 23 leading German physicians and administrators were conducted for their willing participation in war crimes and crimes against humanity. Horrifying procedures were conducted for research purposes on thousands of concentration camp prisoners without their informed consent. Another horrifying example is the Tuskegee syphilis study covering 1932 to 1972 in which as a part of the research project conducted by the US Public Health Service out of 600 low income African American males 400 were infected with syphilis and monitored for 40 years. Free medical examinations were given to them, but participants were not told about their disease. Even though a proven cure, penicillin, became available in the 1950s, 
The study continued until 1972 with participants being denied treatment. Many participants died of syphilis during the study. In the thalidomide case, thalidomide was used in the 1950s to combat unpleasant symptoms associated with pregnancy. At the time it was being used, it was not usually disclosed to the patients that the drug was investigational and still in the tasting phase of the regulatory process. It was discovered that the drug had teratogenic effects causing severe deformities in the fetus. Thalidomide was soon banned worldwide. Unfortunately, approximately 12,000 babies were born with severe deformities due to thalidomide. In the case of radiation experiments in the 1940s to 1960s, US officials studied the effects of radiation through experiments on hospital patients, pregnant women, mentally disabled children and enlisted military personnel. Few of the participants of the experiments gave informed consent. Most had no knowledge that they were being subjected to radioactive materials. As a response to research abuses, some major decisions were taken. Nazi atrocities in the World War II drew attention to the lack of international standards on research with human participants and led to the formulation of the Nuremberg Code in 1948. The thalidomide disaster led to the adoption of the Kefauver Amendment in 1962 to the Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act requiring drug manufacturers to prove to the FDA the safety and effectiveness of their products and physicians to obtain informed consent from potential subjects before administering investigational medications. The declaration of the Helensky drafted by the World Medical Association in 1964 that has been most recently updated in 2000 builds on the Nuremberg Code and is the basis for good clinical practices used today. The Belmont Report of the National Research Act of 1974 passed primarily in the response to the syphilis study codified the requirement that human participants in research must be protected and set the stage for the issuance of the Belmont Report. The three fundamental ethical principles of the Belmont Report are respect for persons that is protecting the autonomy of all people and treating them with courtesy and respect and allowing for informed consent. Researchers must be truthful and conduct no deception. Beneficence, the philosophy of do no harm while maximizing benefits to the research project and maximizing risk to the research subjects and finally justice ensuring reasonable non-exploitative and well considered procedures are administered fairly the fair distribution of costs and benefits to potential research participants and equally let us look into these three fundamental ethical principles of belmont report in detail application of respect for persons it requires informed consent process to be put in place, which covers information that is ensuring that the consent form provide all the information necessary for the individual to make a reasoned decision. Comprehension that the consent form crafted in the language is understandable to the potential participant. Voluntariness ensure that the consent form clearly indicate the participation in the research is voluntary. Apart from that, also see that what additional protection can be in place to protect those with limited autonomy and how to determine whether one lacks the autonomy to make reasoned decision. Now the second aspect that is application of beneficence, assessment of risk and benefits is important. Risk refers to the probability of harm. When considering risk, one should consider both the probability and the severity of the envisioned harm. While the term benefit refers to something that promotes health, well-being or welfare. What are the risks of harm to the participants? Consider physical, psychological, social and economic harms. Are the risks justified? Can they be minimized? Can the research design be improved to minimize risk and maximize benefit? What are the benefits to the participant and also to the society? The third aspect of the Belmont report that is application of justice covers selection of subjects. Is the potential subject pool appropriate for research? 
is it appropriate to involve vulnerable populations for example economically disadvantaged limited cognitive capacity in the research or are they being enrolled because it is convenient or because they are easily manipulated as a result of their situation are the recruitment procedures fair and impartial are the inclusion and exclusion criteria fair and appropriate with this we come to the end of this part of the video in the next part we will discuss ethics in publication